Coming up on today's show, I hope you have dry panties because they're about to get real moist because we're talking about RGG's next potential game. Also, I've been playing Kunitsu Gami Path of the Goddess. No one does it like me. I'm just going to throw it out there. It's true. 100%. What's good, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the What's Good Games podcast, your source for video game news, commentary, analysis, and funny stuff every Friday. We're leaning into the funny stuff this week, everybody, so I hope you are ready. I'm Andrea Renee. That, of course, was the wonderful Brittany Brombacher. Hello. Hmm. And Mrs. Rihanna Manuel Pena is here. <laughs> oh, I got her going. I got also her aroused. Wonderful. <sighs> I am so moist for you, Brittany. Thank you oh. for the intro. I'm gonna clip that and play that every time I'm feeling low about myself and know that I got re moist. <laughs> I'm literally oh. moist, but for other reasons. <laughs> We're just getting it started with the funny stuff, everybody. Oh. Like I said, strap in. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. Ooh, strapped. <laughs> okay, We've come got on. quite the show planned for you, including, as Britt mentioned, Kunitsugami, Path of the Goddess. We've got some fun news to talk about. It's gonna be great. Thank you to this month's super producers, Ferris Atiyah, Justin Foshi, Joshua Franklin, and Punctified. And thank you to everybody who has subscribed at supercast.com. That's what's good games.supercast.com to be exact. And thank you to everybody holding it down on Patreon. We love y'all. Hope you're having fun. It's <laughs> summertime, which means it's hot. Is that part yeah. of why we're moist? No, but I just <laughs> wanted to maybe I mean, redirect kind of everybody for a second. Right it didn't, didn't work, didn't work. Brittany. If it wasn't moist in here already, which it clearly is, it's about to get moister with this feature news oof. story. Oof, 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 oof. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs, like I said, or like Andrea said, strap in. <laughs> it's going to be a bumpy ride, baby. All right. So, yes, the next RGG game will be revealed at Tokyo Game Show. This came, comes from Video Games Chronicle. And the TLDR is that they just announced that they're going to be announcing the game during TGS. Like, there's literally no other information than that. So, like, there's your story. <laughs> That's the story. They broke it, so props to them. And now I have notes, and this is where it starts getting real fucking moist. Okay. Let your eyes get glaze over, ladies. Don't worry. Just go check out. <laughs> go rub one out. Go have a drink. It's fine. I'll be here a bit. Um, <gasps> so what we... <laughs> What we know is that the director, Masayoshi Yokoyama, said that this will not be Yakuza Kiwami 3, and those are the remakes of the first and the second game, so we know it's not that, but he did say that this probably will happen in the future, which is, like, mm, so good. Um, we do also know that they just finished cast auditions for their next game. Now, this is something that RGG does. You see these ladies in the Hostess mini games. You see them in the, um, the the real footage that you get when you date someone or you get to go to their house after wooing them at the Hostess Club. So they just finished this, and they just finished this for what's called a Minato Girl. And I didn't know what this is, but this is a slang term. So they just hired, I think, like five or six new um, actresses. And Minato girl, the slang means expensively dressed and elegant young women in their 20s who hang out in the high-end bars and restaurants of Tokyo's Minato area. Now, this is a very fancy area of Tokyo. In fact, one out of 6.6 .6 people in the area is a company president as of 2023. Mm. So they are portraying these very successful, wealthy women. And it makes you wonder, like, okay, well, that's just a little nugget of information. Now, granted, I am grasping at everything and anything here, friends, but that's just something to keep in mind. So they finished that. So that tells me this is going to be a game of certain substance. Now, I say this because at the Essence of Fandom Anime Expo Like a Dragon fan event that they just had a couple weeks ago, they did say that our RGG did tease their next title as well, and they said that fans would be surprised. And now that is that is the thing that we are all holding on to. Like, what does surprise mean? Like, why would we, we be surprised? If this was just another mainline entry into the Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, it, we would not be surprised by that. I mean, we would because that would be an insanely quick, like, announcement. So it's definitely not that. So then it makes you wonder, could this be another Like a Dragon Gaiden game? which RGG has said there are multiple guiding games. Well, then that's not true. They said that the last guiding game was the first one. So that means that there might be another one. What is a guiding game, you may ask? So that was the game that bridged certain events between Yakuza and Like a Dragon and Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. So guiding games are typically smaller in size, but provide a lot of narrative. So then it's like, okay, 
if it's another guiding game, what could that be? Could that be something that expands on something that happened during Infinite Wealth? Or could it be something that bridges the gap between Infinite Wealth and the next game? Who knows? Anyway, like there's so much possibilities. There's also some rumors going around that this could be the official, the announcement of maybe they're localizing something officially that was only released in Japan. You have um, Yakuza Kenzen, I believe was the name, which is like Ishin. There is um, a fighting game that was released, I think, on the PlayStation Portable back in the day. So anyway, speculation is abound, friends. Um, obviously, I'm just going off because I'm so fucking excited about this. We have the Amazon TV show coming in October. And then I also can't wonder, could this be something that maybe ties into that? Hmm. Because we know that that show is going to be based off Yakuza Kiwami, which is like, it was the first game um, that released. The first one narratively is Yakuza Zero. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe there's something in Kiwami that they're going to be expanding on that would tie into the series. In that case, it'd be real fascinating to have a Majima spinoff. But anywho, this is just me going off. That's all I have to say about it. There's, you know, it's such a small, small little piece of news. But you know how I do, ladies. You know what I do with that? I take that shit and I run marathons. So I that's love my that about you, though, is that you have this deep, intense passion oh, for your yeah. husbandos. And that's what the show is all about, is, is oh. talking about what you're passionate about. I think RGG has been so prolific with this franchise that I kind of want them to slow it down a bit and really give fans a little bit of time to breathe before they announce like another big installment. But right. they haven't really had any big misses. So no. if the studio culture is going okay and everyone's like, yeah, we can keep this pace going, then, you know, I guess keep it cranking. But is that something that you're concerned about as a fan of the studio and the work that they're doing? Yeah, and I feel like I was I was just Googling while you were talking about that because it reminded me, I feel like I had heard somewhere that someone on the team had talked about wanting to do an annual release. Um, and it, it does concern me because I think we've seen how that works out for franchises. Yeah, I know I think about Assassin's Creed. I think about, I know everyone loves them, some Call of Duty, Rhea. I know you're really excited about that 3D shooting, whatever the hell it is. Yeah, the um, Omni Movement. Yeah, Omni Movement. Omni Movement. <laughs> ah, but I know like when it comes to multiplayer, I think you can get away with doing obviously an annual release. Like that's, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I know I am. I'm a little concerned if, if it is, if it does become something that's annual because you can only squeeze so much before it just starts becoming obvious that you're desperate for something. You know, you can only squeeze so much juice out of Majima's blah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm just going to stop right there. But yes, it could concern me. That said, we don't know, like, what kind of game this is. And so if it is something like a Gaiden or if it is something like a spinoff or it is something silly, that could be fun, too. Like, what if it's like a hostess, like, simulator shit? And that's why they have all the girls. But then again, if they're just now hiring the girls, that also tells me that this game is a ways off. Mm. Right. So I don't think we see anything for at least another six months if it is a spinoff. Anyway, that's where I'm at with that. And so and or a TLDR, yeah. I would love to see something smaller. And and if they are going for annual releases, like maybe there's some more bite size experiences that yeah. could appeal to someone like me who is a little intimidated by the size of these games and still mm -hmm. curious to to dip a toe in there. Like maybe Oh, God forbid, something for mobile or <laughs> some, something that I could play in a weekend, yeah. you know? I, there's nothing wrong with that. I think there was a mobile game in Japan around the time oh. that Yakuza Like a Dragon released. Um, mobile only, and I think it was relatively popular. I didn't look too much into it because the FOMO was real, and I was like, I'm not going to be able to play this anyway. Um, but yeah, like I think there's so much. Dude, I had this idea the other day, Yakuza trading cards. Mm. Has this not happened? This needs to happen. I know I would be one of like a few. You know, a few that would get very, very excited about this. But there's so many cool characters. Digital trading cards. Oh, digital trading card game. That's not going to happen. That's not going to be it. But that would be so fucking cool. What if... Anywho. Let me just <laughs> take you down a little bit of a rabbit hole. Okay, let's go. I like what if holes. their next title is, in fact, nothing related to their previous titles, and they pull a tango... Mm. Like Hi-Fi Rush, and make something just completely different... So that is also one of the other theories. And RGG did talk about a while ago that they are working on Yakuza 9, which turned out to be Infinite Wealth, Judgment, I think. And then, um, was it a new Judgment? And then a new game. 
And I think this might be that new game or it might not be. And if that's the case, maybe it is a brand new IP. The reason I do think that this is a Like a Dragon game is because it was announced at a Like a Dragon event. But I do think it would be really cool to see what else they could do with this incredible formula they've they've created, right? Like where else could this what else could this apply to? What other setting, what other characters? You know, change up like enough of it so it feels like something different. But just like use that charm. Like RGG is RGG is just so good at what they do and they're so unique in what they can do and what they can pull off that I would love them to try to do something. And also we all know like IP fatigue is real. Yeah, you, know, you always hear from devs like, ah, oh, this was great, but like I wanted something new. Even people working at the most successful studios eventually want to like leave. Not everybody, but some because they want to work on something new and challenge themselves, right? Uh, so yeah, like I, I think that would be good for the studio. And I think now they've established themselves as one of the best. So like, why not go out there and see what else you can do? What other magic you can work? I guarantee you're gonna have millions of people buying your shit regardless of what it is. Oh, that would be cool. exactly. Yeah. Well, how exciting. And it it's not exciting. that far away. It's like what? It's not. A month and a half? I, I have just been snarfing, ladies. I have just been, <laughs> I got this TV show coming up in a couple months, and we got the announcement coming in just a couple months. I had infinite wealth. Like, it is just such a good time to be me. Mm. It is your year. <laughs> it is yeah, year girl. I'm Ugh. very happy for, uh, for you. And thank you. I hope that the announcement is going to be all of all you dreamed and hoped for as well. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody. That's going to do it for our feature story for the week. When we come back, we have a couple of quick headlines, including a social media lawsuit that had an unexpected outcome. And it turns out the Academy likes the Fallout TV series, too. But before we get to that, here's a couple of ads to help support the show. If you don't want to listen to the ads, head on over to whatsgoodgames.supercast.com. Let's get into some headlines. Rihanna, this first story is both heartwarming and also like kind of like how did this happen? But also what a great outcome. Yeah, honestly, I'm surprised it's taken this long for us to get a story like this. But mm -hmm. uh, this comes from us uh, to us from Eurogamer and Sega sues social media user for, quote, excessive slanderous and insulting comments, end quote, against an employee. Yes. <sighs> feels good. So Sega has revealed it's taken legal action against a social media user for harassing one of its employees, something that happens quite often, warning that it will continue to pursue legal remedies or criminal proceedings should similar occurrences happen in the future. Right on, Sega. Let's just take a pause. A little clap here. Well done. Mm-hmm. Back to the story. The company, which published a consumer harassment policy last year, reiterated its stance on social media harassment in a post on its Japanese website. Providing context, it explained it's been dealing with an individual who has made, quote, excessive, slanderous, and insulting comments on social media against one of our employees for a, quote, long time. Like, again, we've seen this before. Uh, after the individual failed to improve their behavior, surprise, surprise, Sega continued. The company was granted access to this person's information through the courts. Since then, it's reached a settlement with the individual agreeing to pay damages to the employee, delete the slanderous and insulting comments, and refrain from such actions in the future. Yes. Sega adds it will... <laughs> it's amazing. Sega adds it will take similar measures against anyone that breaks its cus consumer, sorry, customer harassment policy in the future. Their statement that says, we consider slanderous acts against employees such as announcements of violent acts, threats, and intimidation to be serious human rights issues that damage the dignity of employees and lead to a deterioration of the work environment, end quote. Ooh, that hits and hard. That is honestly, so good. It's oh. such a bar. And honestly, it can be extended. This deteriorates the quality of our fandom, our community, our entire work environment even if you're not an employee of sega we've all seen it we all have opinions on it and at least everybody here at what's good games would like it to stop and this is one way to get there so i think this is fantastic and sega bravo a huge <sighs> fan of this legal action as your your discourse or as your recourse for people not following your policies which is you know within your right and i hope more companies follow suit this I'm is absolutely so incredible that they were able to get an actionable item out of this terrible situation. We've seen this far 
too many times across many publishers and developers of all sizes in many different countries. And I'm so glad that there's finally something in the books that people can point to to say, look, you mm -hmm. think that you're above reprimand or above punishment for behaving like an asshole, but you're not. So mm -hmm. stop being an asshole. <laughs> Make more examples simple. out of them, please. <laughs> like keep doing it. I want to see all these cases pile up and then I want people to be scared to be an asshole. Mm -hmm. Being an asshole should be scary and it's not. It's not. Yeah. I, I love this. Thank you, Sega. Yeah. Yes. yes. Great. I mean, props to Sega. I didn't even know that they had this policy on their Japanese website. So that is where the policy is. You have to translate it into English. But I want every publisher to have this policy on their website. This was mm -hmm. a thing that's been part of What's Good Games mission and ethos over the years. And anybody who's taken part in any of our community groups knows that we don't tolerate people being jerks. I think like in our rules across all of our uh, profiles, it's like, don't be a dick. And we mean that, mm -hmm. you know, because we want people to be able to have passionate conversations, but you can't be an asshole. You can't be mean. You certainly can't threaten people and, <laughs> you know, take it to like a dangerous or violent place. And that just happens so often. And people it's just scary. let companies in particular, big publishers just kind of, I don't want to say turn a blind eye, but they kind of wave their hands at it and are like, oh, it's the internet. And I'm like, no. Yes, I know it's work to take those people out of your community, but that work needs to happen. Otherwise, they are going to just yeah. keep thinking that they can behave like that. And well, I know a huge props to yeah. our entire mod team who's worked with us over so many years, whether you're a current mod or a former mod. We really appreciate you. And, of course, our, our band, hammer, band hammer leader, Brittany. I get joy out of doing it. But yeah, no, you're right. I think great. a lot, until it starts impacting the bottom dollar, I think and that's when companies are going to start making those changes. And I guess if you have a whole bunch of employees up and leaving, that's annoying for them. And, uh, but you, yeah, like you said, it's like, you know, people are assholes, especially when it comes to online discourse. And yeah, like companies just turn their head and it's like, they're still making tons of money doing it. So why allocate resources to fighting it? And that's what's really bummer about the whole yeah. thing. But yeah. this is great but news. This is fantastic we, I, news. We have even more great news in our next headline. Amazon's Fallout TV adaptation has been nominated for 16 Emmys. Hey! That's incredible. The nominations are out for the 76th annual Emmy Awards, and Amazon's adaptation made an impression among Academy members garnering 17 nominations across 16 categories. For, ki for those keeping track, this is actually the second Emmy Awards that are happening in 2024 after last year's ceremony was delayed due to the actors and writers' strikes. The critically praised and fan-beloved series is in good company with this year's biggest hitters, including FX's Shogun, which leads mm. with 25 nominations, followed by The Bear, which I just finished, which was very good, at 23. Only Murders in the Building has 21, and True Detective Night Country has 19. Some notable category nominations for Fallout include Outstanding Drama Series, where it's alongside The Crown, The Gilded Age, The Morning Show, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Shogun, Slow Horses, and Three Body Problem. That is a stacked category. Oh and for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series is Walter Goggins, who has secured a place for his role as The Ghoul. But he's also in good company with Idris Elba, from Hijack, Donald Glover in Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Gary Oldman in Slow Horses, Hiroyuki Sonata from Shogun, and Dominic West in The Crown. So yeah, that is that's tough competition. Yes. I, I mean, I'm gonna you know put my my money behind Walton because he killed it as the ghoul. But that is that's a tough category. <laughs> I feel like if you're Fallout, you're just happy to be there. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Yeah, and I think like, Amazon you know, as well games. has really showed that they've been putting. I mean, obviously, they've been putting a lot of investment into their Prime Video TV series, and I'm just so glad that our little nerdy corner of yes. IP fandom with Fallout it turns out is no longer a, a little nerdy corner. It's a gigantic pavilion right. where all are welcome. It just is. wait until Yakuza next year, or this year, I mean. Yeah. yeah. Just wait. <laughs> I mean, hopefully season two releases uh, weekly so we can have longer conversations about it. But I, I absolutely love Fallout, so this is great. Great to see. Welcome back, everybody. It's time for 
hands on. A big thank you to Capcom for sending over codes for Kunitsugami, Path of the Goddess. So we all got a chance to look at this back at Summer Game Fest Play Days. And now have an even deeper dive. And Brittany, mm -hmm. I saw you post that you are obsessed with this. I am. It was kind of love at first sight with me at Summer Game Fest. Uh, Rhi, I know you got to play it as well. And I think you're like, it was fun, but you weren't like enraptured. Like I was. Not the same way you are, but I haven't had as much time as you have. Right. Fair. Um, so anyway, yeah, after playing at Summer Game Fest, when we got the option to review it, I was like, yes, give it to me. So yeah, developed and published by Capcom. It is out this week. And it's a fun mashup of genres. Um, it doesn't really do it justice to say it's a mix of like action, tower defense, are there some RPG elements to it? So the setting is Mount Kafuku, which is this mountain that's covered in defilement, and you are so the main character that's spelled S O H, and you have the maiden of the mountain, and her name is Yoshiro, and she needs to purify the Tori gates um, at the end of every level and ultimately just purify the entire mountain because shit's fucked up. There's all these crazy monsters called the Seed, S E E T H E, crawling all over it that come out at nighttime, and these are really cool. They're based off of Japanese mythological creatures. Um, I went down a rabbit hole Googling some of them and like, I just, I just love this shit so much. So anyway, yes, you need to get your job as so is to get Yoshiro to the end of each level so she can purify some stuff. Um, but of course, like <laughs> it's not that easy. So you have these 3d levels. Okay. So you can move left, right, up, down, all around. You can pretty much walk in any direction you want to. And you have these, um, I don't know if I mentioned this already, these day night cycles. And so during the day, you have a limited amount of time to get gather resources, rescue villagers who act ultimately as your towers, and then you assign roles to those villagers and you want to position Yoshiro where you want her to go because again, you want her to get to the end. But the day cycle is, you know, not that long. And then you have the night cycle, which comes right after. And that's when all the enemies emerge from the gate. Now, in the beginning, there's just usually one gate at the end of the level. But then obviously, as you progress and the levels get a little bit more difficult, there are multiple gates. And then that's when you have to get real, real fancy with it. Um, so the interesting part, and this is a mechanic that's new to me, is you have to carve the path for her to get to the end of the level that she follows. Now, to do this, you use a resource. And I don't think they're actually called gems. Maybe they are called gems. And you use those um, with every like inch you take, like it takes a certain amount of gems. So you can't usually do this on the first day cycle. In fact, you never can. You can only carve this path during the day because at night she tries to like not die. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> so you have to carve this path, right? But what's interesting is you have to make sure you position her in a way that is defensible in a way that she hopefully won't die and there are traps that you can build during the day as well um you have a little construction worker that like follows you around and he'll like build stuff for you uh, everything is already like predetermined in terms of its location so it's not like you can build like a trap anywhere you want it's just like repair this thing here repair this there and they will so yeah you have to like tell her how far you want her to go and then stop her but the thing is like you want to make sure you progress her far enough during that first day cycle that when it comes time for that second day cycle she has enough time to get to the end of the gate because what will happen and i guarantee it will happen to you because it's happened to me and a bunch of other people is you will get her just to the end of the gate but she still needs like another couple of feet to purify it but she's not close enough so you have to go through another entire ass night cycle where all these enemies are emerging just like inches from her right and so that makes it very very difficult so you have to be strategic with it so that's kind of like the wrinkle in it uh but it's really it's a really addicting uh little gameplay loop here so the nighttime comes and like i said the monsters come out of the gate and then this is where you as so can do your little fancy schmancy combat moves and techniques and the combat is relatively simple you know you have different combinations of square and triangle i'm playing on playstation you have guard you have evade um, eventually you can unlock like it's like six levels in and I can only talk about, I think up to level eight, you unlock a whole like skill tree for him. Um, and so, I mean, at least I'm assuming it's a man. I haven't seen this character without their mask on. So maybe it's some hot woman underneath. Who knows? Mm. Um, wouldn't that be a fun little twist? Anyway. Yeah, we'll um, yeah. So you can unlock these combinations. You can unlock certain like archery skills. There's a lot more you can do with this character, but at the beginning you can do a lot except for just hack and slash and hope for the best and really rely on your villagers. And so, yeah, in terms of the villagers, so after you complete um, a mission, you unlock a boss fight, and then you defeat the boss, 
and then you can get like you get a new mask. So the masks I can talk about, for example, you have an archer, which is like self-explanatory. You have a woodcutter, which is your like main basic melee. You have a uh, sumo wrestler, which is like your tank, and he's really cool. Then you have a shaman and other sorts of uh, towers you can build and move as you like during the map, during the night when all the monsters are coming out. Uh, so, I mean, like, here's what I'll say, too, is you have to be on your game. I've never lost a level. I've never had a monster reach Yoshiro. But it so it always but it always feels very intense. So it's this really fun balance, but I've yet to lose a round, which is like I'm not sure. I, and this isn't my genre usually, so I, I find it hard to believe that I'm just like naturally good at this. So I have to believe that maybe it's just something in the balancing. I mean, I like that about it. I like it that it's not too challenging, but it is very intense, and you have to be like on your A game. Your brain has to be turned on. So. That's kind of the gameplay loop. But then after you finish a round or a match, um, a map, I should say, you then go out to like the overworld map, the map of the mountain. And this is kind of where you get like the, that progression and RPG elements to it. So you collect this. Oh, God, what is it called? Musubi? Musubi? I can't remember what it's called. There, it's a very like it's a different sort of resource. And you get those after completing rounds or after doing extra um, bonus objectives. And you use those to upgrade your villagers. So each villager has an upgrade tree of maybe like five or six different skills. And it can be as basic as like, you know, increased damage, increased HP. Um, or it can be like, you know, a new bow attack or a new ground ground slam attack. And so you can dump all of these into your character, your villagers. So they're obviously more powerful. And then you can go back and replay certain levels that now have new objectives so you, so you can get more resources. So you're encouraged to go back and try the same levels again. And that, then as you unlock new characters and sorry, new villagers, you know, you can mix and match the gameplay and mess around with it. What's nice about it too is as you upgrade your villagers, you can also take out the resources at any time and assign them as you want with no penalty. So you can just see what kind of gameplay style works for you. But I mean, like, it's it's so fun. It is the funnest. I mean, here's the thing is, like I said, it was love at first sight for me kind of when I played it, but I didn't think I would actually be this, this hooked into it. Usually for me to be super invested in a game, I need a good narrative. I need the most fascinating of characters. And this game doesn't really have any of that because it's not the focus on it. There is a story and the characters are. I'm like, okay, what's your problem? What, like, what, what's wrong with you? Uh, but like the, the, the gameplay loop itself is just super fun. And so you get to your village. Sorry, not your village. So you defeat a map. And now you can use that same map as a base. So every time you complete a level, you have the ability to turn it into a base where you can upgrade it for materials or other like things that I'm not sure why this exists. So some of the upgrades you do are, are worth it, right? Because you get resources for upgrading. And then some of them you upgrade like food and then you feed it to Yoshiro and you watch her awkwardly eat it. And I'm like, what's the point of this? Someone somewhere is going, oh, yeah. But, like, to me, it's like, okay, I don't really need to watch you, like, eating fucking snacks, but I will. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> I mean, so some of it, I'm kind of like, why is this here? I don't really know. And then after you complete all of the upgrades in a, in a base, you get maybe, like, a new, gar a new talisman or a new special ability, which are other things you can mix and match to your character. So. so there's just, like, a lot of moving parts here. I'm trying to cover it, like, as generally as I can. But um, I think you did an excellent job. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have something in my in my mouth and it's like food from earlier and I'm trying to get off my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't. And it's been driving me crazy this whole time. Anywho, um, yeah. No, I've done about 10 stages and the stages are varied. You know, there's some where you're on a boat. There's some where you can't fight as so. You have to rely on your villagers and that makes it unique and fun. Um, and yeah, I mean, overall, like there's a few little like grievances I have. Like to pass time at your bases so your upgrades get done, you have to finish stages. And I don't want to do that a whole bunch. So what I do is I just found this one boss that takes me 30 seconds to beat every time. And that counts as a stage. So I've been beating this poor thing's ass for hours now <laughs> and it passes the time. And then I'm like, okay, cool. I can go back to my base and everything's upgraded. So like little things like that, but overall, like I just love that this game exists. It's such a cute little gem. It's something very unique, especially coming from Capcom who is just on fire lately. That's right. Paris. You're, oh. You heard me. Oh, has he been talking smack about Capcom too? Oh, I mean, no, not not necessarily Capcom, but just Resident Evil. And oh, it's like, well, oh, I mean, yeah, that beef is well known. <laughs> yeah, you know, I got to rub it in when I can. Um, but other than that, like, just super happy this thing exists. It's such a fun little gem and definitely, like, probably will be one of my top games of this year. It, it, it's got me hooked. And, Andrea, I think you would really like it because I know you like tower defense. Yeah, so strategy. I pretty much, like, just, like, booted it up and, like, that's it. 
Um, I got distracted by small child and was like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm coming back and then didn't come back. But the art is really gorgeous oh, in this game yeah. and I really love the colors and the art direction and so much of what they're doing. And it really kind of hits the Venn diagram overlap of a lot of different gameplay mechanic styles that I really enjoy. And I haven't sunk my teeth into a good tower defense game in quite some time. And I know that this is not strictly a tower defense game, but I like that there are tower defense elements. And I think it's going to be a really fun experience. And I'm so glad that it's just out because July yeah. was needing a little pop of something. <laughs> mm. Mm. A little pop of something. I will say for my fellow Y axis inverted fans, I have to make a note of this. There, there is a bug, ladies. And I literally, I'm not joking when I say I thought something was wrong with me. I thought I was having like a brain malfunction or because I could not get the camera to work. You know, the, the Y axis. I could not, when I wanted to look down, I would look up. When I wanted to look up, I would look down. And I, I was like, what is wrong with me? I know I'm sleep deprived, but turns out there's a bug in the menu where it'll tell you you're on Y axis invert if you're actually not. And every time you start a new level, it reverts to default, which is like the normal camera. And so I, I mean, I kid you not, like I told Jason, I was like, I think I need to lay down. I said, I think something is wrong with me. Is this the downfall of my career as a gamer where I can't even handle <laughs> a second camera control? Um, so just be aware of that. You just have to, every time you start any sort of round or match or anything, you just have to go back into the options and make sure you turn off invert and then turn it back on. Cause even I wonder if this is something invert, they're going to patch. Yeah, I fucking hope like... so. It hasn't been patched as of today, which is uh, Wednesday, the 17th. Two days but... before launch. Maybe there's a yeah. day one patch coming. <laughs> oh, I hope so. Because I, I, I was like, I think I'm dying. I think this is my end. <laughs> that definitely that feels like a, thing. hey, we got to fix this kind of a situation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. I'm surprised yeah. it wasn't caught in cert. Yeah. So anyhow, other than that, though, fantastic little gem. Being, I think, very favorably reviewed by... By peers of ours, and I'm glad to. I know Danny really liked it, Re. Oh, yeah. Told me he did. So, yeah. That guy. That, that guy. guy. Well, I wish I had something new and different to talk about, but I played a video game that I can't talk about quite yet. So I posted on mm -hmm. social media that I was at the Star Wars Outlaws preview event. Thank you to Ubisoft for having me down, but I can't say anything about my time with the game for now. But Just I have cute thoughts. pictures, both of you. Oh, yeah. It was good times. Cute, pic cute pictures. Yes. Pictures. Yeah. We took pictures. It was a thing that happened. <laughs> that was great. That's adorable. So, yeah. yeah. That's all I'm going to say before I say me. something I'm not supposed to say. There you go. <laughs> hey. I haven't played anything new at all. You I have a Kingdom small Come infant. We were yeah. there. We understand. Thank you. <laughs> we we totally do. I will say on my end, I finished Kingdom Come Deliverance finally. Oh, good for which you. It was one of my favorite games. Of, was it 2017 or 2018? One or the other. Uh, loved it. Never got around to finishing it. Then when the second one was announced, I went back and vi revisited it. Fantastic little gem. Very excited nice. for the second one. Yeah. Felt good to finish that one. Nice. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at with Hades. I'm like, do I have to like finish that? Because I never got like to the final... Like the in the, the final like cutscene or whatever. Mm. So I'm like, well, do I go back and do that and try to grind that out? Or, or do, do I just it? say, ah, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you enjoy the gameplay, sure. Yeah. But uh, there's but, also many but other I things could play, to do. I could just be playing <laughs> Hades too. That's true. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Things to think about. <laughs> if you have thoughts, leave them in the comments below. We appreciate everybody who is mixing it up in the comments and letting us know what you think about the episodes. And hopefully you continue to do so. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button on YouTube if you're watching the video. And uh, I guess we'll see you guys next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.